How's it going, everyone? I'm Kale from Cubo Gaming, and I'm going to show you the basics of how to play Northgard in five minutes or less. Keep in mind that I won't be able to cover everything, but I am going to try and help you better understand the game and get you started out. Jumping into the very start, you have a few different game mode options to choose from. There is story mode, multiplayer, and single player. For single player and multiplayer, you have full control over how the game will play out. I won't go over everything here for the sake of time, but go with the Northgard game mode and everything else is self-explanatory. Now that we are in the game, let's do a quick rundown of the in-game HUD and what it all means. On your top left of your screen, we have your win condition check to see the progress from each clan. You then have your diplomacy with other clans and NPC factions. And lastly, we have your rivalry with other clans. To the very top right, we have your clan's happiness meter, food supply, wood supply, crowns, which is money, stone, iron, population number and the limit of that population number, military numbers, and your lore. The number next to your food, wood, and crowns is very important to keep an eye on because it shows you how much you are gaining or losing in that field. When you first start out, you need to build a few essential buildings before doing anything else. You need to build a scout camp, a wood lodge, and a house. Keep in mind that your villagers are the only type of townspeople that can build buildings, so you always want to have a good supply of them. Once the scout camp is finished, go ahead and left click on one of your villagers and right click on the scout camp. Selecting your townspeople and assigning them is done this way for whatever job you assign them to. You can select the scout and right click on an uncovered piece of land. This allows you to have control over what parts of land you want to uncover first. Once the Woodcutter's Lodge is finished and built, assign one or even two of your villagers to it. Also, quick tip, you want to build your wood lodges in high tree density areas because you'll get more wood that way. Now, in order to increase your population limit, you'll want to build a house. Always try your best to build more houses, even in late game, so that you are always growing and your population is never upset because of the lack of available housing. Now, once your scout has cleared some areas around you, you need to clear those areas. Now, if there are wolves in that area, this does mean that you need to kill the wolves in order to colonize the clan, which means that you may need to build a training camp and make a warrior earlier than expected. I always recommend trying to get areas with food production potential. Here are some types of food areas you need to look out for. With soil, you can build farms here and they look like this. Ponds are also a great source of food and you can only put one on a pond that actually has fish in it. Deer are another great source of food and you'll need to put a hunter's lodge there. Now, you never want to neglect the amount of money that you're getting, and eventually you want to build a trading post or ship dock so that you can build trading routes and earn more money. How trading posts work is you will lose a small amount of whatever material you trade with the other clans and factions in exchange for money. Your lore tree gives your clan specific buffs in whatever area you choose. There is no right answer here, so unlock the tree how you feel is best for you, and eventually in the late game, you should be able to unlock everything there. You will also want to build defense towers on your borders, as those will help prevent clans and NPCs taking your land. Don't forget to build mines on stone nodes and later on iron nodes. The stone will allow you to upgrade your town hall and all other buildings. You will want to upgrade your town hall and scout camp because the entire map cannot be discovered until you upgrade your scout camp. When you mine iron, you will need to create a forge in order to upgrade any of your types of town people's skills. This is super important for upgrading your healer's tools, your food production tools, maybe even your wood cutting tools, and even your military tools. You can also craft relics, which all have their own abilities and benefits. One I always use is Mjolnir, which does this. Once your food supplies and production levels are good, you'll want to start building an army for conquering land. You'll need to build training camps. The training camp is best for close combat troops, the axe thrower or archery camps are good for long range, and the shield bearers are a great frontline group to have. Don't forget to get your war chief, which for most clans can be achieved through your training camp. Once you have a sizable army, you'll need to push through each of your enemy's tiles, and once you kill all of the troops inside that tile, you will start to conquer that tile. You will need to conquer tile by tile until you finally get to their town hall and then take over that. And once you take it, you have taken that entire clan out for the remainder of the game. All right, well, that was a quick rundown of how to play Northgard in five minutes or less. Thanks for watching and let us know if there are any other games you would like us to make a five minutes or less video about.